Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about room pricing and one of the oldest method of room pricing is rule of thumb approach. We're going to talk about what this approach is and also about the demerits or disadvantages of this approach because of which newer approaches were adopted. Rule of thumb approach of room pricing, as I mentioned earlier, it is one of the oldest methods of pricing rooms. Well, if you need to sell rooms, sell it at an appropriate cost so that the business is profitable. According to this approach, the hotel will charge $1 for every $1,000 spent on the cost of construction and furnishing of rooms. Now, there is a catch. The catch is that this approach mentions that there should be 70% occupancy maintained in the hotel. Well, as the wise people say, it's better den rather than red. So let's consider a, an example to understand this better. According to this, the construction and furnishing cost of a room is $90,000. So according to the formula which we just read, the hotel will charge $1 for each $1,000 spent on the construction and furnishing of the room. So we get the price of room is equal to 90,000 divided by 1,000, that is $90. Well, that was pretty easy to calculate, wasn't it? However, the market is quite complex and dynamic for such an ease in pricing a room. Consequently, this approach has a lot of limitations due to which newer approaches were developed and adopted later on. Let's discuss them one by one. This approach only considers the cost of construction and furnishing and ignores various other costs associated with it. Well, the construction does not run hotels. There are operational costs that are not covered in this approach. This approach does not consider inflation such an important thing. You know, the prices keeps on increasing day by day and year by year, and there is no provision to adjust this in this approach. No one is alone in business, and this approach or to room pricing totally ignores the competitive set, which is the set of hotels of the same status competing for the same clientele or market. What if they are they have different prices and some other hotels have lower prices than this particular hotel which we are considering in an example. So the clientele will go to that hotel and consequently we will not be able to get good business. It presumes that the occupancy of 70% at an average will be maintained. That I'm sorry but that may not be very realistic thing for hotels facing seasonal business or all hotels in recession for that matter. Where there is investment, there has to be returns given to the stakeholders or investors. This approach ignores that. I mean, who would just invest his or her money without expecting earning or returns? I will definitely not be the one. This approach totally ignores the various unexpected and unavoidable costs that may occur in due course of operations. Also, there are other departments in the hotel which are also the revenue centers. They also earn. So this approach totally overlooks the contributions, the earnings or the loss of those departments. This is totally overlooked in this approach. What if there is a renovation? The cost of renovation is also not considered in this approach. So, in a nutshell, we have a lot of fallacies in demerits in this particular approach. 
due to which various other approaches were developed and consequently adopted for room pricing. That's all about the rule of thumb approach for today. In the coming sessions, we will discuss about the other uh, room pricing approaches adopted by the hotels. Till then, thank you very much and have a great day.